All right, hello world. I keep doing the thing, like every time. I just like push start and then bounce up. Whatever, it's all fine. Uh, check some audio levels, that looks not bad. We'll see how the music goes, I think it's gonna be okay. Um, so last stream, we were doing a little project that I've been thinking about and kind of working on for a while. So I'm doing these stream notes now, um, which I guess is probably a better one to do this. Is that it? Stream notes? Yeah. Uh, so I'm trying to put together some good stream notes. So if you miss the stream, you can kind of go back and see what's happened and then bounce around to it if you want to take a look specifically. But here's the details of what's going on. One of the things I'm putting in there is just the links that I use during during the stream. Uh, stuff that would be helpful. I should alphabetize these. I'll add that to my list. Um, or I'll just do that as we work through this project. Because when I was putting these together, you know, I've right now I've got, I don't know, 20 tabs open and then 20 tabs open, 40 tabs. And so it's kind of a pain to kind of go through and click on each one and grab the URL. You know, I, what I'd be doing is oh, let's throw it in here. Uh, so whatever, we're going to pretend that we're doing it right now. Oh, I should up the font size there. How's that? 40 lines, oh, wait. 26 lines, that seems about right. Uh, so whatever, let's do this. Links from the stream. Who cares about capitalization? But so the process would be, go to a page, copy the link, figure out what to call it. So here, I would copy this, paste that, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. Not awful. And then sometimes I might want to like add a note. Uh, we can actually pull up this page. Oh, do we have our Nope, Hugo serve. Let's get Hugo running so we can actually see what's going on here. Three, two, one, go. Three, two, one, go. There we go. Stream notes from October 3rd. Yeah, so that's it. So down here we can see this. And so sometimes I would add notes, add more stuff. And so it takes a little while. So what I started working on last night or last stream uh, was a way to look at all the tabs, grab the URLs, grab the titles for the pages, and then also grab the descriptions for the pages and make uh, a bunch of markdown links so that I could basically just copy and paste, or I could just fire off a command, get all of those, paste them, and then edit at, you know, a little bit of editing and moving ones that were you know, like the Google links, for example, I don't need to keep that in there, right? Um, but so, and I found this uh, Dave, I should look and see about Dave. We're gonna do about Dave too. Does Dave have a Twitter? I don't remember if I did this last night. Maybe about Dave has it, stand by. I don't see Twitter. But so I found this script that Dave here put together uh, and it does basically exactly what I'm looking for. So it's an Apple script, but I'm on a Mac and using Safari, so that's great. Um, I was actually afraid I might have to use a different browser, um, like Chrome or Firefox or whatever, but F Safari is my preferred. Um, so tell Safari, create a, basically create a variable, I think is what this is doing. Set a variable called window count to the count of every window where visible equals true, so all the visible windows in Safari. 
repeat with x from one to window count, so loop over for however many windows. Same thing with tabs. Uh, repeat for y to one and tab count, so loop over the tabs. And then set tab name to name of tab, y of window x, tab URL, and then you append it to the doc text. And then what he had was to copy that to the clipboard. So if you run this and then hit paste, you got it. I wanted to do a little something extra on this, which is in, let's see if I'm in, yeah, so far URL puller. So I also want to see if there's descriptions available for the pages. Um, and sometimes there is, sometimes there's not. I think it's one of the ones we looked at. Uh, oh, so one thing I figured out last night, I was trying to grab the title. Why was I trying to grab the title? Oh, I was just trying to grab the title just to hit a an element. Um, and it turns out the way I was using Selenium, and it turns out the way that you use Selenium to grab the title, you don't grab it as an element, you grab it as a method from the driver, whatever. You can watch that. Actually, I'll put notes because I'm going to move both of these streams into the same page. I'm not going to split up the stream notes on them because these are both continue or this is a continuation of the previous stream because I got tired. But what I'm looking for is these type of descriptions. So in addition to the title, this would be nice. When running the Apple script with OSA script, you can return your desired text output with a return statement at the end of your script. Perfect. Um, there used to be a meta description that people would use all the time. Uh, it got gamed for SEO stuff all the time, but like I haven't seen that in a few of these posts. But I have seen these Twitter uh, descriptions, and then I wouldn't be surprised if we see some OG descriptions, which I think is Open Graph, which is what Firefox, Firefox, uh, Facebook uses. But like this is all mushed in property OG description and prop description, so maybe they're just using this one, which is cool. Um, but we'll just figure out. Oh yeah, but that is it because this is meta property. Yeah, so this is this is for Facebook. And actually, let me look because I did this stuff for my site the other night. Twitter. Wait, where's the Facebook stuff? OG URL. Wait a minute. What's going on? Huh, I'll have to look at that. Because there should have been an image and a, maybe not a description, but maybe a description? Yeah, whoops. Uh, let's add that to our list. Figure out why Facebook description and image isn't showing on Hugo site. I just call it Hugo site now. Okay, so there's a little bit of a rabbit hole. Uh, but so I'm trying to find those descriptions. And so last night, or last stream, I got, I got it working for the most part. So Safari URL puller on the right one here. Oh, let's see. Uh, starting up a Selenium. So I'm using Selenium. And my idea here is I'll use the Apple script to uh, look at Safari and grab the titles and the URLs. And then I'll use Selenium to grab the URL, go out and grab the description. Um, Cause I don't, actually I should look at Apple script before I do that. Script editor. Window, document, source URL, text, the text of the page. Current URL. Uh, where is this window? So what were we getting? So 
yeah, so tab URL to URL. So we're getting the name and the URL, which my guess is tab name URL. Let's source. Oh, you can grab the HTML source. Index of the tab, text, visible, yeah. So I was gonna see if it was trying to pull out the description and I'm not surprised that it's not. Um, do JavaScript. So there's probably a way in Safari, to, or I mean, it's, it's a turn complete language. So you could figure out a way once you've got the tab source you could build your own version, basically of Selenium, uh, to find uh, the the data or Beautiful Soup, either one, and grab it. But we're just gonna run. So methodology is gonna be uh, page description. Is this the one? Selenium test. Get page title. No. Here's for our URL folder. So we're going to run the Apple script. We're going to run this Apple script, which is sitting in a file right next to the Python script, uh, which we're going to run with this, which took me a little while to go look at my notes about how to get the output of that because the, and a little bit of the difference that we did from, oh, I actually don't need to set the clipboard. Um, I don't know why it always does that. Uh, so I'm actually returning the doc tech. So that Safari page that we were, sorry, the Stack Overflow page that we were looking at was how do I actually get the text instead of throwing it to the clipboard? And so this return, when you're on the command line, will spit out the, the text, whatever you're returning. Uh, and so we're capturing that with this line uh, by running a subprocess in Py Python. Uh, we split out the lines, and then for line and lines, we're going to split on that character string, which is this, which I'm using to separate the URL from the title. I kind of want to reverse those, but it'll be OK. Um, and so I'm grabbing the URL, so split, and then grab the second item, which is indexed at 1 print URL and then get details. So let's just run this for a second just to show you what happens when we're here. Uh, make sure we run, I think it's command shift. So hopefully it's banging through Safari. Oh, this makes me a little nervous, there we go. Uh, so here's all the URLs. And if we wanted to see the titles, um, and this is how we can title equals line split. I'm sure there's a way to do that. Python sign variables at split. Apparently work with Python script to handle logs. Part of the script uses following code, which works fine. However, the Perhaps doesn't look nice. Take my part in the factory for the 39 values. Right, just throw it in list, right. But this actually is what I'm looking for. So we should be able to do title URL split on that. Drop that, drop that. Print title, print URL, print a new line, because I'm lazy. There you go. So here's, here's the basics of it. And then what I would do is I would just format this out into Markdown. Which is originally, originally I did that in the Apple script. You, you know, I could just make the formatting here you know, and, you know, whatever. This and that 
the same thing over there to close it, etc. So you can just, it's just formatting. Uh, but I realized I needed to use the URL, so there's no point in formatting it and then sucking it out, because it would have been harder if it was in the markdown setup. Um, you know, uh, example.com, like it would have been more complicated to pull out the URL there. Possible, not awful, but why make it harder? So we're getting the title, we're getting the URLs, and then so then we fire off get details for the URL. And that's where we come into get details for the URL. Let's move this down so we can see it. Uh, and so I've fired up, I've already have a Selenium. Something's yelling. I don't know why it keeps thinking something's saving it. Oh, what's going on? Uh, so we fire up a Selenium a headless browser, a Firefox for Selenium. Uh, and then we run down and we work on the process of getting the description. First thing I was trying was just trying to get a title. That turned out to be a rabbit hole because you can't get the title. It finds the, the element tag name for title, but there's no text in it. Like something's just weird with it. In order to get it, you have to stay with the driver and then do driver to get title. So that's a different, that threw me. I actually don't care about the title. That was just the thing that I was trying to do a proof of concept with. That ended up being a long time trying to figure that out. And kind of a note that really what I should have done is gone after the thing that I was after, uh, which I didn't do. Lesson repeated. Uh, so we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this. Uh, yeah, so now what I'm gonna do, I'm keeping an exit down here just cause I wanna fire it only through once. And like, this isn't super the best way to do this, but uh, it's gonna work for now. So we're gonna get our URL. Let's do this. Let's take these prints out for now. So we've got our title, we've got that. We'll do this. I'm just gonna kind of back into this a little bit, um, just more as an example than anything. Um, nothing else down there, right? Oh yeah, all kinds of junk down there. Yeah, these are some other things that I tried uh, to try and like, Here's where I was trying to get the script process to output. Didn't work. Same thing, trying to get it. So I think I'm going to put these in the show notes as examples of stuff that didn't work. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, so here we go. We're getting our URL. We're hanging out until it shows up. I need to do more research on that. Uh, and then get description. So here is what we got working last night. And here's, I'll just run this um, and then we'll walk through it. So run this one. I wonder if there's a way to leave Firefox open. I think there's a remote way to do this. Uh, but here's our description. In some instances, the get title method does not work for me. Take a look. And so that's off of this page, which if you look at it, why not? Oh, it's Stack Exchange, I gotcha. Uh, if you look at it, something that I caught last night is, where is it? Search description. Oh no, this has changed. Oh wait, wait, so that's sources, but in the elements, wait, it changed again. Last night there were new lines in here. It's on Chrome. I've got video to prove this. Either that or I was hallucinating because I was very tired. The 
Description. All this junk last night was going into new lines. Uh oh. Error blocked by client. That's bad. What's new? Go away. Console don't need you right now. Where are elements? There you go. Yeah, so this is, at some level, this processing comes down with new lines in it. So somehow I saw that. And, oh, I tell you the reason I saw it is because the first time I ran it, uh, I wasn't removing new lines, which I should probably do that in a different place. But like if we, whatever, take this out and run. first time I did this and I always thought it was just I didn't think you could put new lines in there but then this showed up and I was ah come on um, but this gets us there so this gets us our description and so now really it's only a matter after all that preamble it's really only a matter of doing this on or basically migrating this code into this code uh, and then the other thing we'll watch for is this is using Twitter description. My guess is not all of the pages that we pull down will have a Twitter description. So we will see some that don't have a description. Then we'll go look at those, see if what, if they have descriptions in a different tag or with a different format or whatever. Uh, so I'm just gonna do this to make it slightly easier for me. Uh, let's just do this, this, this. I don't know if that's actually gonna make it easier or not. I just don't know how to tab. Can you do this? Nope. Oh, there you go. Sorry, URL pull is it, right? Oh, okay, I can switch them. That's nice, get rid of this. Right, we'll clean up all this junk later. So we got our URL. Now, so we got our URL, we've waited. That's the wrong one, good page description. We got our URL, we've waited. So now we're gonna get find element by name, this one. And then get page description content. Driver clues. Does it need a thing after it? It does. I call this to get description. Since that's a little more explicit about what we're doing right here. So we're gonna go ahead and move. No, we're not, because that's all in there. Normally I'd wipe these comments, but I wanna actually put them in the post about stuff that we tried. This didn't work. Driver, see other file for example. I'm trying to figure out how much of these I want to do for the notes. But anyways, Twitter description, page description equals get attribute the content from that element. Uh, and then actually, I guess we could do replace here. I'm still getting used to Python. Uh, and we want a space in there as a replace. And then page description. So now let's just see if we can format it. Print. We're going to want open bracket, those things, that, with, that, 
close that with that. It's a very fine looking, oops, don't want to split. Why'd that come up? Uh, format. And so we're gonna have title, URL, description. Uh, okay, let's fire it up, see what happens. Let's stop. I don't know what it's doing. Where's my console? Is it going to the other console window? Yep, runs for our URL puller. It's going over there. Interesting. Try to run command without establishing a connection. Or what? Stream notes. Oh, I'm using a little mid dot. Look at that. Localhost. All right, what do we do? Oh, probably don't want that exit. Oh, it's also going to be interesting. I bet we need to have a try here. I'm going to go ahead and put that. Ah, uh, no, I'm not. We'll wait till it explodes. I guess I can put that window back. Can we put that window back? Hmm. Ooh. Angry. Angry. Go there. Try to run command without establishing a connection. Message, Selenium, common exceptions, invalid session ID. Get URL. You like it? Oh, wait, wait, wait. I think I, it closed. I, I understand. I closed it. That closed the entire this thing. That driver. I gotcha. So we should close that down here. I don't know how important that is, but it seems like maybe a good idea. Take three. On the locate element, name, Twitter description. Yep, see. So localhost stream notes had this. Cool. Django project tutorial three did not have a Twitter description. So what's cool though is I can. Well, so let me let me do a th try first because this should get us past this. I think right. If we try this, I'm still not to, oh, come on. There we go. I'm still not totally up. So is it try else? Cause I don't want to do finally, I guess. this up because I'm not used to it. Uh, there we go. Python, the try statement. Exceptions. Try. Accept. So if I try this, and it works, cool. If it doesn't, just return nothing, or return an empty string. 
Because I still want to have something happen. Well, let's see if that actually gets us through it. Feels like it should. Nope. Connection failure. Huh? That's a different error. Did I exit it again? No. Hmm. This is confusing. So I got the title. Oh, 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 this is trying to hit a server that's not there. Okay. New error. Net error, what did it say? Connection something. Connection failure, right. So this git didn't work because there was no thingamabob there. Uh, so we're gonna try this, right? We're just gonna move all this over. This is probably not a very Pythonic way to do this, but that's how we're gonna do it for now. And then accept again, return empty string. All right, let's see what that gets us. Yeah, so there's also Selenium Remote. Uh-oh. How are we doing? Oh, page not found. Nice. If I was doing this more robustly, I guess you would call it, um, I'd actually pull down the pages. So I'd like, yeah, so I'd pull down the pages. I probably wouldn't use Selenium. Uh, I'm just, I've been playing with Selenium a little bit, so I kind of am interested in playing with it more or getting my hands in it a little deeper and kneading around with it. But what I'd probably do if I was doing this in a little bit more robust manner is grab the page uh, independently and then use, and then make a basically a copy of it or at least put it in memory. Uh, and then use something like Beautiful Soup to do the processing of it. Because that way I could split the process of uh, like a separation of concerns between getting the page and processing the page. Because right now, I have to make the call out to the URL to actually go get the page before I can process it. So those things are tightly coupled. Um, not the best way to do it. Uh, oh yeah, so there's empty lines at the end of this, but I think it's basically got everything. Um, I don't know why those empty lines exist, but like if we do... Yeah, so. Scratch pad, screw desktop. Scratch pad. I just wish just put the scratch pad at the, at my home. Watch your arm. It's far URL board. So far URL. So if we do OSA script tab parser script, this is what goes, looks at Safari, processes all the windows, processes all the tabs and all the windows, and hopefully spits us out a bunch of stuff. Oh, so I guess that's actually one of the things that's taken time is going through Safari and doing all that. But yeah, so it, it puts a new line down here that I don't know where that comes from. Um, Oh, it's funny, I was like, why is there Python in here? It's one of the descriptions. Uh, let's actually fix that. Four line and lines. Can you do if, does this work? Doesn't look like it. PyCharm doesn't think so. 
What if we put those around it? Survey says no. So, uh, I just want to see if we can knock that error out. Like, I kind of don't like errors in my code. Even though it's fine, it's at the end, and it should have all been processed, it was still, still could freak me out. DQRS. So, we're going to import regular expressions, and we're going to go to our notes for pi regular expressions. X. It's a, where's match? Search. I need, uh, where are my examples? Pi. Search. Additional matches. There we go. Uh, I'm going to put the words. Regular expression. Expressions, whatever, down there. So if I search for it, find it. Yeah, so if, so we're gonna process all the lines and then, or we're gonna loop through all the lines, excuse me. And if re search, because match only works at the beginning of the string, for tilde string, am I doing this in the right order? And test string, yep, yeah, in line, Then we can do all this mess. Ah, wish that would work. Yeah, see again, I'm gonna, now I have to process all the things again, uh, instead of being, it's like, it's tightly coupled all over the place, but um, I wasn't focused on that. Uh, it's, a thing I'm going to start practicing more even as I do these, just because I want to have the practice of doing them. The question is, do we see... anything that came down with a description that looks like one maybe I'm not sure I should be writing this to a file this is slow as I'll get out dash is there not seeing those dashes a lot and the problem is I don't want to close all the windows. Okay, so we're gonna make this go faster, right? Get description. Oh, but actually I wanna, this is this is my payload. I wanna look at all this stuff. Um, with open, right there. Hi. Right to a file, yeah, with open outputs. Um, pages.md as write, write as file, as file. file.write, right? file.write and then you need the new line alright I'm just going to run that to see if it works but while we're doing that we're going to play in a new window here's all our stuff yeah so selenium get title Actually, let's just see what happens if we paste all this in. Uh, where am I going? Here. Links from the stream. Paste. Save. Safari. New window. 
localhost and stream notes. Oh, I needed a dash in front of them. Uh, okay, we're gonna add that here. This, whatever, that's fine. I'm gonna do it in just the selection, I guess. I need it in just the selection, in selection. Loop, replace all. Whoops. Why did that work? See, that's a bunch of notes. Oh, part of it too was I was printing out the URLs. That's where all this came from. Uh, all right, we'll just wait till the so this thing finishes. Yeah, because I was printing out the URL as up here, which is not really what I want to have in the output. That's just it's kind of like logging, basically. Uh, but that, of course, messed with this. The actual output that I'm looking for. This is the output you're looking for. All right, get rid of that. Whoa. Still there? Yeah, undo that. Cool. Like this is a lot of work, but it's something I'm going to do a tremendous amount, and it's going to make it awesome. That sounds very loud. I didn't set my stream title. Uh, it still works from last stream. That's fine. I was weird. I did my checklist. I was just oh, I was making an edit to the checklist and I blew right through it. I've got a um, little checklist that I go through to get set up for the stream. Try and get everything lined up. What do you think? We done? Hey, exit zero. Find me pages. Ooh, why is that like that? Let's see what happens here. Oh, it's still gonna be all... So we know we wanna do a formatting change, which is I wanna make this a list. I'm gonna wanna alphabetize it too, so... But first things first, because I've got another thing that I can alphabetize it with. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and run this again just to get it moving. But that's all there, and this time, I don't know why that replacement didn't work. It's not regexed. So in selection, make your selection, replace all. Why did that work? Oh, it disappeared. What the hell? Okay, that was there. It loses it when you make the selection. Oh, maybe when you make the selection, it undoes the... I don't understand this. Come here. You come here. Find in selection, that. Oh, it must clear the selection. Yeah, because it didn't catch the one on 28. So it makes a selection once you do that, and then it makes the change. I gotcha. Now this is interesting. Why did we make a new line over here? I'll have to look at that. But first, How's this looking? There you go. So this is a really good start, what I'm looking for. Um, stream notes, right? This is the page we have open. So, and it's the link. So 
it's the title of the page linked up to the page with the description if one exists. This is awesome. This is exactly what I'm looking for. Because now I can just go bang, get all this stuff out, and edit things down. Oh, and you could do some... I could do some things like if it's the Google search, like if it's a google.com slash search URL, I could skip it. Yeah, we're gonna do that too. Yeah, I'm just looking for things to make to like reduce friction for doing these. Um, I can exclude my launch pad here. Oh yeah, the other thing I was working on last stream was trying to get a PHP file to do this. And I spent a bunch of time trying to get PHP to trigger Apple script to go do the Safari thing. And I just couldn't make it happen. So then I just jumped over and I'm just gonna like, I'm gonna run a Python script. Also, I've been messing around with Django a little bit, or I started last night. And um, once I get into Django, I'll see if I can make it work in Python. Uh, and there's different ways you can make it work. Like you could call the script in a different way um, or fire something off that makes the script get called or whatever. Uh, but so let's continue on with this for now. So first things first, let's see if we can find descriptions for the ones that don't have descriptions. Oh, well, there is no description there. See, this, this is the meta name. I'm not calling this tag yet. But this is what I was looking for. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't have a description, so it's not going to help me see if it has one. Uh, let's pull a couple of these. You could also do something. Yeah, so if I've got duplicate things, I could not do the duplicates. We can make this kind of neat. Description none. If you're going to put the tag in there, maybe fill it in. Description, none. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Yeah, keywords. See, this is from a while ago. Robots all. Robots all is the name of my new band. Links, 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 links. Let's see if there's another. I don't know what this... Link rel search is for. I need to look that up. Describes, describes. Yes, C-R-I-P. Okay, so there's only three of them. One, two, three. Okay, so there's no description on that page either. All right, let's see what tree CLI bash has on it from the Google search. Look at elements instead of the sources. All these pages that are made with code are just like crazy. Nothing there. Okay. Linux directory tree structure. Okay, so this is actually a page. How we doing? Wait, is it I that gets you there? Whoops, that's not what I meant. This. I. Does that take you to elements? Nope, sources. Here is a meta name description. See, and like, if I was doing this better, I would have a test and I would send this page to it and then see if that test equaled this. Um, I'm gonna do that manually now, uh, just cause I'm already on this path. And I don't totally wanna have to go back and grab everything. So this is one of those where it's like, it's probably better 
Yeah, you know what? It's it's gonna be better to actually do it that way. Um, well, all right, we're gonna do it that way. Oh, it's still running. Wow. No, it's not. Safari URL puller. Okay. Uh, Alright, I'm going to close some of these just to get them out of the way for a minute. See, I should have done this to start with. I just, I thought it's one of those things. It's like, oh, this will be a quick, easy thing. And I don't really need to make tests or do any of that stuff. Um, sorry, URL puller B2. Here's the one that I need to get a better setup for. Hey, Selenium. Single file with main and tests. I do like doing that, but I'm not going to do that now. Basic. Test set up with running test from the main file. Yeah. All right, let me just try. It's weird that there's just a P up there. Sometimes it's a little slow when I do my launcher. I type faster than it comes up if the machine's doing something. All right, so let me see if I can remember how to do this. First of all, user bin environment python3 print hi. All right, and make sure we're in the right file. Okay, cool. And then new file test safari url polar v2.py user bin environment python3 print rush. Whoops. Print, and then make sure we get used to doing that. Okay, cool. So here we go. And I'm gonna walk through this in Sandy Metz style, one step, like failing tests for everything. Um, how do we write unit tests? What's the syntax? Probably at night. Uh, oh, we gotta make it a class. So class. Am I doing that right? Is it test puller or puller test? Move tests. All right, I'm just gonna start writing. Uh, I'm not going to worry too much about getting it right right now because I can go back and refactor. Blur test. Unit test. Test case. And down here. Oh, we need to do this. We can just do a pass right now. And. Nope. Keys. If name equals main unit test main on this tests. Okay. So define test. Whatever. 
fuller exists. Self. Uh, and then we just do, so what's the, this is where I get lost. I don't have this in my head yet. I don't have notes on it here really. Test five five. So it raises value error. Once I do this one, I'm gonna make I'm gonna put this at the top of my notes. Um, I spent a lot of time getting it where I could test in the same file. So this is from Builder, yeah. I, I could go Google this, but I want to see if it's in my notes. One. Primary file. Okay, this is the way to do it. Basic test setup with running tests from main file. That's a different thing. Okay, that's all right. But I don't necessarily want it in a class. Do I want to put it in a class? Like I, if I, I if I do it in a class, I'm, I know how to get to it. I'm just trying to see if I only do it in devs, because like I see a bunch of people who only do like methods in a file that's in main, and I want to see if I can figure that out. That'll oh, fail fast. If we want to do that. Just to do this, right? We're working. Um, ooh, fail fast is not defined. What? Okay. Never mind. So, how do you get? So, you need to import. Well, we can start with that. Import Safari URL Polar V2, right? So that works. Oh, wait, right? And if we just do um, get description text. Now this should error, right? Ran one, failed. No attribute, get description. Yeah, so now, okay, now I'm hooked into it. Um, so we can just do this, with this, with this. Turn null, or none, or yeah, none, whatever. Right, got it. So just real quick. Add it to my developer notebook, micromar, my notes, unit, test, basic, example with two. So this is test as far as you da, 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 dot pi. I used to think about making, getting one of those clipboard managers that um, you could go back and clipboard what off of, but like I copy and paste so many passwords, I don't want anything accidentally doing that, especially now that I'm doing stream stuff. Last thing I need to have happen is flash in a password. Just about everything's MFA, but still. we could do this as a full-on test. So now what we want to do, so get description 
we're gonna use this one's our description and then self assert equal spell it right description to that thing now this is gonna choke oh you gotta oh well I'll be passing the body to it okay I don't have to pass the URL I'm gonna pass the body and see this is helping me figure out how to run this um, so this is gonna blow up right because it doesn't have good description I oh, just did that Huh? Do you just do this? Name, get description is not defined. Okay, I'm confused. Hang on. What did this one say? Module Safari Puller has no attribute, get description. Now I'm confused. I wanna see if I can figure this out a little bit before I go Google it. Apologies if you're a Python tester and are screaming at this screen right now. Modules, Safari Puller has no attribute. I spelled that right, didn't I? rename it doesn't have rename refactor rename ah, it's always hidden so copy that I just want to make sure I've got this for real right nothing changed I don't think or did it oh something changed what did I do oh pull versus puller okay see St don't jump, just do one thing at a time. That's right here, I'll pull V2. Uh, we're gonna rename that to Puller. Yeah, just click on there, that'd be nice. All right, so now we should be able to change this and this. Now we could work. Cool. Okay. Good. So this is what we're expecting. We we're gonna pass. Well, actually, what I should have done to really do it, I shouldn't pass it anything. I like to do this step by step by step. Uh, because what I want to do is get to what uh, Sandy Metz calls shameless green, right? So I, I just want the quickest, fastest thing that gets me there. So description equals that. And now all I'm going to do is literally copy and paste the return string. And then run, ran test. Okay, see, we're good. And I just want to move that into a variable. Make sure this still works. Sweet. So now we can start to play with it a little bit. Uh, so what I really need to do is pass a full blob of HTML to it because I want to use beautiful soup to get to it, but I don't actually need the full blob, right? I don't have to send the full file. Um, all I really need to do is send the part of the tree 
that we need to get to. Like, I, I it needs to be... Uh, representative. So I want to make sure HTML tree. Equals this. So we're going to have HTML and it's in a head. And then there's our meta tag that we're looking for. We're going to close head. I'm going to give it a body. And a close HTML just so it's a valid HTML doc. And then, so we're gonna send this and this is gonna choke because get description doesn't have, isn't catching arguments yet. Let's pull that over there. I'm gonna go back and forth on that. So now we're gonna take, whoops, HTML string. We're just gonna pick it up, whoops. Test is running. And now we can actually do the work to see if we can find the thing. So now we're gonna go to beautiful soup. Beautiful soup. Python library for finding cool stuff in HTML. Running the three sisters document through beautiful soup because it's beautiful soup object, which represents the document as an nested data structure. Here are some simple ways to navigate it. Soup.title. HTML doc, HTML parser. Yeah, so I don't think I've, so again, I would actually just try and run this. It's probably gonna choke. So I don't think I've got beautiful soup installed. Run the tests. HTML doc is not defined. Ah, maybe we do have it installed. So let's come down here and put our HTML string in here. Well, let's call it doc, since that's what the example had. I like that. Just for fun. I shouldn't be changing things like this, but I should select. See, I just made a bunch of changes, so if something breaks, I don't know which one of those changes did it. There we go, ran test. So it's passing, like I'm passing the stuff in, I'm doing the parser. Uh, and now, so I'm not going to, I'm not gonna try and get this on the first try with Beautiful Soup. What I'm gonna do and again, this is the Sandy Metz thing of staying one step away from green. So what I'm gonna try and do is figure out how to get it, but without doing the return yet for the test. Like I just, I wanna see it before I send it back to the test. Data. Get in meta tag content. Sounds delightful. So you find meta property. Provide the meta tags first argument to find. Then use keyword arguments to check. If else checks here be optional if you know that the title in the URL would always be present. Yeah, so we're going to want the if. Oh, I didn't know you could do if else is in line like this. Interesting. Uh, but so... So I'm going to name the variable the same thing that I want to have. Soup dot find, but I'm not, but I'm overwriting it here, so I know my test is gonna work. Soup find 
meta property equals loops content, I think, right? Oh, name description. Oh, name description. Wait. I confused. Property OG title. Let me just do this. Name description. Print. multiple values for argument name. Find all meta, the tag property none. Using. Let's wait, see what else we got down here. Code. Wait. I'm ask a follow up question. That's not how we do things here. I'm trying to get this, but instead of one line results, I get a sorry, meta block. Parse site. Found stuff. Code. If you have a new question, please click Ask Question button. Include a link to this question. Yeah. Did you ask that question? It does not look like you did. Meta tags, beautiful soup. Scraping metadata, scraping data with beautiful soup. Beautiful soup documentation. Start at the end. Uh, start in the middle. This is what we want. How do we get it? Get the content. The contents of. Here's what I've got for section code at the moment. Okay. Tags, get the tags. Soup, find all A. No, I don't want that. We're gonna description tie something like this. Tag meta name equals description. That's what we just tried. Oh, find all. Tag results zero. First result in the list. Hopefully the only one that matches. Otherwise you got some more work. Okay. All right, I just want to see I'm going to call it return string in return string print rs. Let's see what happens with that. Find all got multiple values for the argument name. Uh, find all. Find all. Name description. I don't got multiple values for name. Okay, yeah, sure. That's kind of the point. And I'm only and so the other thing that's nice about this is I'm not I'm only passing it this string. So like, I'm not having to look down a whole bunch of other HTML. Meta, name, description, content. Crap. Whoops. Maybe in the archive somewhere. 
The second issue, I believe the issue is that find all, this, this is an older version of the soup, returns a list, but you're trying to access some values of the list directly. Directly. Let me see this entire discussion, please. That's not a multiple result issue. That's an error because it doesn't like the use of name as a keyword argument to a method call. Try this instead, minute. Okay. Oh, okay. So name is colliding with something as a call. Let's see if that at least passes. Okay. I still wanna make this green. Ah, uh, sweet. All right, so run it. Boom. List index may not be. Oh, so let's see if we just do find if it finds it. Uh, let's do find all. Okay, that's fair. Find all, but we're only going to grab the first one. This is going to explode in other places. There we go. There's the print. And so now. Well, and so here's the question is like, is the Pythonic way to actually do this? And then check that out. If we run it, see now we've passed, we never really got away. We're never more than one undo away from green. Uh, and we got the test passing. So I can kill that. All right, so that's one. We can rename this to test, whoops, rest, uh, test meta description, meta name description, right? Test passing, sweet. All right, so now we've got our basic setup. Uh, what's the best way? I'm trying to think, what's the best way to do this? So we'll start with this. Oops. If name matches main, we're gonna run. Um, do it. I just want to, I'm trying to figure out how to like start at the end. I'm trying to get my hooks into this a little bit. Um, oh, actually, so what I should do, this is fine. Um, what I really want to have happen. So that was the, that wasn't actually the best place to start. The, a better place to start would have been here, def. Get markdown string. Yeah, because I want to. I want to end. I want to start at the end with a full thing that I'm trying to assemble. So, uh, target string equals, and we're just gonna make one up. Um, Great brown fox. My site uh, 
stream stuff. And then we're just gonna go, so that's what we wanna equal. And so we're gonna start with self assert equal target string. And then again, just, just to get the test to pass, the simplest, easiest thing, I'm just gonna copy and paste. So I just wanna make sure that this test works. So ran one test, seems like it should have run more than one. Oops. Ran zero test. See, it's not working. Oh, right. That's why you do that. Ran one test. Cool. And so now, slowly but surely, we just do one thing at a time, uh, which would be, and I want to try and stay one step away from green or one undo away from green. So we're going to do and you kind of mm, actually yeah so let's do this out here this is a better way to do this result string right yeah I like this this reminds me of did I used to do stuff like this unexpected indent oh whoops we want that to stay Right, test it, boom. And so now I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay one step away from green and make some progress. And the way I'm gonna do that is up here uh, equals, I'm gonna spell it right this time. Get, get MD string. Right, now this is gonna fail. But I can fix that in one step. Let's keep these alphabetical. By doing this. Oops, wrong thing. So tests are green again. Uh, and now I'm going to comment this out. Tests are going to go red. Oops. Oh, why did that work? There we go. What if we just return this? Tests go green again. And so now we can work on moving stuff around. string we're gonna do that we're gonna check that that works and so now what we want to do is uh, just start passing stuff in so the things that I want to pass in are the quick brown fox the URL and the stream stuff but I'm only gonna do that one thing at a time so uh, we're gonna pass in quick brown fox do I want to do these with Yeah, let's do them this way. So this is gonna explode, right? Because it has no keyword argument title. We do this. Now it passes. And now I can take this into here. I'm starting to get more used to this format title. We're still passing. And like, I could have kept the other one there and like made a new line and tested them. But like, it depends on how far you want to go. And if I, if I ran into problems with this, I would have backed out and then made a copy of the line and tried to assemble on that line instead of keep trying to, to make the test. Like I want to get back to green and one undo, like sometimes you hit it three times or whatever, but um, so there's title and then URL equals our URL. It's gonna explode, exploded. 
from here. URL. That. URL. Run it. Passed. Description. That. Blow up. Yeah, see, I always want to blow it up to make sure I'm seeing red before I see green. Um, description, 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 description. So hopefully passing. Nice. Easy enough, but like we tested every step of the way to get there to make sure that we were doing it. And like for something simple like this, probably you could jump to it, but like it, it's worth it to get into the practice. And also sometimes it just, it eats you if you don't. So you'll hear me talk about that a lot. Uh, now we get rid of this, right? Cause we're straight here on the test. Uh, and this is, this is our full test, right? So this, this has everything in it. Run it one last time after you do all the formatting. Sweet. Yeah, so test string or target result, make sure it matches. Golden. Short, simple to the mix, to the sweet, whatever. So now how so now we need to start working on like an integration test, basically. Um and this is where I get a little like Well, so if you're, do we need an integration in these unit tests? Because what I was thinking we would do, actually, you know what? I don't think we. it's really that critical, right? These unit tests are actually, are, this is constructed nicer than I'm used to seeing with this kind of stuff, because it feels like yeah, so all we need to do is populate these values that we send a title, that we send to URL, and we send a description, and we're confident that it's going to make the return of that for us. So, like, we've got a description going. Might as well run both of them. Two tests. Or I've got a description going. And again, we're going to have work to do on this. So now we could just do the title one. Yeah, because then once we once we have those individual components, we're confident that when we send the components, as long as they match this kind of structure, they'll work. Yeah, so we don't actually need an integration test. Because what I was what I was going to end up doing or was about to do was making kind of a full integration test where I called metadata to then call the other one to then call the other one to then you know stack it all the way down. But yeah, we don't need to do that. Test metadata description. Actually, I'm gonna call this test description. Because sometimes it may be, I mean, it should always be in meta, but that's not necessarily a name. Now I call this make MD string. So again, I'm kind of refining stuff as I go through it. And so we're to, now we can also test, this is gonna explode, but we can test this and we can be confident that if we get it right, it works. Get description, HTML doc. I like this a lot. Uh, cool. Yeah, and I was I was about to try and make an output, like a full blown output, before I realized that really all I need to do is the lines. Like that's the the atomic measure of whether or not this stuff works. Because just printing out the lines, there's no reason to test that because that's just testing the print command of Python, which works. So 
Yeah, okay, I'm liking this. So now we just need to do the other two components. So test description, test make. So I'm gonna put these in alphabetical order. And just to start getting into the practice, I guess I will actually do some committing. Uh, even though this is all in a different at some point, maybe I'm going to start making individual projects for these, but we're not there yet. PyCharm. Oh. Wow, that's not a Git repo at all. Hmm. Interesting. Uh... Interesting. I don't know where I want to put this then, because we're going to go ahead and make a Git repo. But like this is going to be a tool that I'm actually going to use, I think. Yeah. So this is this is a live thing. Um, it's not just an example. So my stru I need to redo my structure a little bit. Um, get in it. What am I doing? Uh, Safari URL. Oh, should I make this with PyCharm? I don't. I, I'm new to PyCharm. Um, a new I've, I've changed the way that I do stuff and all right we're just gonna we're just gonna do something new here for a minute yeah um Tools. We're going to call it Toolkit now. All right. We'll see how that works. Uh, yeah, so stuff has been all over the place recently, so we'll see how this stuff goes. Uh, we may we may move stuff around. Uh, but for now, we're going to get a Toolkit. So I actually want to make it right here, right? Safari URL fuller. That's project, image virtual environment, inherit, create a main. Okay, I'm just gonna go with the defaults. Surprise it doesn't offer to make a git repo for you. Uh, new window. This is turning out to take much longer than I expected, but I like the process of going through. Like this is, I, I like doing tests. Even for the simplest stuff, it's one of those like, ah, oh, this won't be too bad. No need to test it. Turns out making tests is nicer because we're going to do stuff like having Stripping out the Google URLs, doing the alphabetizing. Setting up a Git repository in PyCharm. We just do get an it, right? I was I'm just surprised it doesn't like offer to do that for you and have version control built in. We clone a Git repo for an existing project under version control. PyCharm automatically detects. Okay, for some reason, the manual configure PyCharm. So if we just get an edit from the main menu. Oh, okay, so you can 
go get stuff. It just doesn't init one for you. Open the project, choose enable version control. I want to share the project with ECS. Always add and synchronize. Associate the entire project with a single Git repo. I just want to look at this. Uh, can't see VC. Uh, I guess I could. Yo, I don't know why that's framed up, but that's perfect. Enable version control integration. Select. Get. Enabling Git, refreshing history. Yeah, so it says create a Git repository. Sure enough. Did it make it get ignore? Nope. Because we don't want to put the virtual environment in there. Um, after VCS integration is enabled, PyCharm will ask you whether you want to share the project settings via VCS. Always had to synchronize project settings. Oh, okay. So associate different directories with the project with different Git repos. Nope. Oh, I guess I could do that when I had that scratch pad, but like, I'm going to keep all the tools as independent tools. Need to add projects, local changes on version files. Uh, select the files you want to add git, press control A. I'm not going to mess with too much of this stuff right now. I'm just going to use the command line. Ah, if you attempt to add a file that's on get ignore list, PyCharm will suggest force adding it. Click cancel the confirmation only. Cancels force adding to ignore files. All the files are committed. Okay. Excluding. This file is created around automatically near size. Check out a git repo. I don't know about this one. Therefore, it's the most commonplace. Yeah, if there's no git ignore file in the VCS root directory, you can right click on any project windows, new file, git ignore. Right, okay. Oh, I didn't know about this. To create a git ignore file in Windows, create a file name and dot, dot git ignore dot and Windows will name it automatically dot get ignore. I wonder if that works with other stuff too. I've always wondered about how to make dot files in Windows. Add files to get ignore. Yeah. Um, check project status, track changes, add a remote repo, add a second remote. Okay, cool. Uh, I still don't know F strings. But first thing we're going to do is Oh, actually, I guess I could do that in PyCharm. Uh, there we go. Get ignore. So I've got Where's my get ignore? Uh, get ignore, default from your repos. This is my various stuff that I figured out over time. Is we... This is old. Wow, that wasn't in there. Cool. 
Save that. I don't know what has an X over it. The debugger, that's what I get get used to using. Uh, this is Python script. Yeah, print high. Press command R to run it with your code. Press double up to search everywhere for classes. Or double shift. Whoa. That was cool. Here, see the top of that. Oops. I should spend some time with PyCharm. Uh, print name, hi, whatever, this is fine. I just want to get all the comments out of here. And this. Make that go away. Okay, cool. Um, whatever. Whoops. Okay, that looks right. Idea. It's that idea. Where's that directory? Whoa. This must be... It's uh oh, come on. What am I doing? Get commit message initial commit. Alright, we'll try and start actually using these like real projects. How about that? Uh new file. Add the filing file to get. Just cancel it. It's all I'm hearing later. Yeah, do it. Oh, look, a little preview over there. I'm increasingly impressed with PyCharm here. Other than I don't have the hot uh, hot keys, hot fingers. Uh, the scripts. all the URLs and titles from all open tabs in Safari and produces a markdown file with them and their descriptions. That'll be good enough for now. Yeah, so should I just leave it called main? I, this is where I don't... I don't know as much. Like, because don't we want to actually have it called Safari Puller as the file? We're going to just throw everything in here. Yes, we're going to add that. Finder. Oh, actually, we're probably in a different window, right? So here's Safari Puller v2, which is just going to become Safari Puller. I'm going to take main out of here for now, I guess, and just make this kind of the library or the whatever. Uh, Safari, no, test. Safari URL Puller pi. Add it. Here, copy this, copy that, copy this, copy that. This just goes to this, right? This, 
goes to here. Oh yeah, see, I should update that to this. First, we're to run this and see if it works. Test failed. Kaboom. Oh, I don't have Beautiful Soup installed. to show you the uh, hip install. I thought it was on the... Uh... There you go. And just for fun... So we're in our virtual environment um, here. You can see this VENV. So we're going to install Beautiful Soup here. Got it. And so now, if we run our tests, we're probably going to see another error. Oh, no, we're not. That got it. That's all we needed. Launching unit tests with Python and unit tests, test safari. It's kind of weird. Didn't always say that, did it? Two tests. All right, whatever. Uh, also, I want to see a failing test just because we move stuff over. There's a failing test. Assertion failed. This looks different. I don't know why, but it's in some kind of test mode. Okay, so it gives you the diff, which is always hard for me to look at, but we'll get better at it. Um, cool, okay, so I'm going to close main for now. Your test over there. Okay, so we've made our new thing. Um, oh, you can run individual tests? Okay, that's cool. I need to go read a manual about PyCharm. That's what's happening here. Line that up, yeah. This isn't though. Line that up. All right, let me get rid of this one. I'm not getting into anything I want because I don't have this in virtual control. Yeah, that's our test. Let's get rid of that one. Delete. Safe delete. Okay. Uh, and this was just what we just copied in. Cool. Delete that. Yeah. And then delete this. We're gonna hang on to this because this has stuff that we want in it. All right, we're back to doing stuff again. Yeah, so, and this is one of those, like all that time was basically me doing stuff I should have done up front. Test description, make string. Okay, right, so now we can do test title. Apple is looking for product testers, and I've been invited, according to this spam text. So, is title a word? I don't know. I'll try it. Um, test title one. Come 
sometimes it doesn't fast forward. I don't get it. Be fine. Um, I like doing this. And so another way that we can do this is just self start equals target title result title, which I think you're actually supposed to do it the other way. I always get that backwards. So now if we run this, we should see a third test. Cool. Uh, and again, all I did, like, so that's just getting green going. And so now I stay one step away from green at all times. And the way that we do that, result title equals this mess dot, what do we call the other one? Get title? Yeah. Get title. I'm not going to put attributes in there. This is going to fail. Because we need to add this over here. Get title. And just return true. Whoops, wrong file. Okay. Uh, and I could have kind of combined this into one step. Well, actually, here, we do this. So hide that, run it, it's going to fail. How do you make it show the other view where it's easy for me to see the end? Soft trap, down the stack trace. Show past. Sort alphabetically. Sort by duration. Expand all. Collapse all. X failed test. I don't know what toggle auto test is. Restore default layout? No. Nope. Problems? Nope. Python console? Nope. Oh, it's got a little to-do list. Look at that. Yeah, why? Because I want to see... Hmm. Oh, one test failed. I remember this. Uh, so now we should be able to do this. Turn that straight. Run. One test passed. Good. Return title. Let's move it into a variable. Test passed. Get rid of this. HTML doc equals HTML head title test title one title head body body HTML. Now we're going to fire that down the pipe, which will fail This is here, HTML doc, on that, passed. Now we can do the processing. So we're, we've, we've got it set. And D E A U T I F U L, soup, get title. Tip today title. Return request, brief suit, prior. Yeah, okay, so. Prints the tag, prints the tag string content. We're gonna want that. Let's 
suit. Beautiful suit. I swear it pay plays this song every 10 minutes. Of course, it's been two hours, so maybe. HTML doc, soup find title, print title string. Actually, we'll, yeah, we'll print it out just to see what happens. Um, did that just automatically go when I save the file? Yeah. So return title, uh, come on. run test passed so we got it and I don't know about you but sometimes I like to see the test fail when it's past green a bunch there we go oh wait is there git in here git update project commit okay Why doesn't it run the full test suite? It just says one test. Oh, is it just where it's where my mouse is? I remember that. So if I come down here, there's all three tests passed. Cool. All right, so this is after all that hubbubaloo, like this is pretty straightforward. And this is one of those where if I was more used to setting things up in this way, right? It, we would have gotten here much faster, but this is part of it too, is me learning and doing this stuff now, which is not the way that I've done stuff kind of in the past. So. And like I originally started with that scratch pad where I was just like, ah, we'll just throw everything up here. But like, this is a tool. Um, and I've been thinking about like redoing where I store tools again. So toolkit is gonna be the thing. Uh, so that's our title, that's our description. What's the last thing we need, URL? So URL, we're not gonna get. That comes straight from the script. Now this is a little bit weird because I've got to figure out how to bounce, like I'm working off another script for this. So. Well, and actually, I don't need to get the title. I didn't need to do that title. Because the title is going to come from the Apple script. Excuse me. Yeah, the only thing I need is, is to get the description. Yeah, we don't need this. Thinking through that. Yeah, the only thing that we need to get from Beautiful Beautiful Soup is the description. That's where this all started. Uh, and so I don't really need to test the Apple script. What I do need to... Okay, so actually what I do need is test get title and URL. Do I really need to do this? Because I'm just doing a split. Um, This is where I'm not sure the right way to test part of this stuff. Um, Cause like,
Right. Okay, so we got that because what we're gonna do, I need to move. this script into here. Okay, and then we call that doesn't work. That one doesn't work. That one works. With this, I would say response. Print. I would say response, right? So this is just going to dump out a bunch of stuff from all the tabs. This is going to take a second, but I'm okay with this because I want to see where we are. Boop. Oh, we got to do some process. Ah, come on. Nope. Oh, don't do that. Wow, that went way faster. I thought it was kind of slow to do that the first time. Okay, like right now I'm looking at these like, oh, I could take out the Google stuff, but I want to get the first thing done first. So there's all the things. to a try because it returns oh no we can do so ah, come on what is the no home okay control home instead of control up okay there that there so now we're going to so we need to split this and again this is one of those like it feels I don't have a good way to test this I mean I guess I could throw to like copy this and throw some stuff at it but it feels like I don't know a weird test slot uh, so, whatever, OSA lines equals OSA response dot split on new line, or OSA line in OSA lines if OSA line search those things I'm getting kind of far out here so I'm just gonna see what happens here if I'm if I'm at this place string has no attribute search Oh, right. Alright, search that in OSA line.
Okay, so there's all the lines. So now we can be confident that when we run this split, we're not going to run anything that's not there because we've already verified that it's there. So print title, print URL. And just a second ago, it took no time. What? Too many values to unpack. What? Is it is this not splitting into is that just one big line? Is that what's going on? Doesn't look like it. So we're there. So we're here. wrong too many values to unpack expected to it worked here why did it work here Oh, OSA response. I need to be in line. Oops. Sorry. And now this should work. There we go. Got our title, got our URL. So now all we got to do. Yeah, again, I don't have a. Like, you could test that by sending a couple different things and then pulling out and making sure lines matched. I guess. But that feels a little like... Eh. I mean, you probably should because you can... That's... But like, it all depends on what you get back from the script, but then you can test it. I don't know. This is fun for now. Um... Python, get web page. Ooh, I made all kinds of stuff there. Save web page to file, download web page to Python 3. Uh, open URL's response. All right, so let's try this. Um, Cause I actually don't want to save it, right? I just want to, but I think this will get me there. Um, all right, so let's take this out of the mix for a minute. And again, I'm not, like, I'm not going to worry too much about kind of testing this because I'm testing features that already 
have been tested. S-M-I-T-H. Kind of takes a lot out of you to do this for a couple of hours. There we go. Doctite. Yeah. Uh, oh, so it's the uh, binary uh, bits, whatever that is. Um, bytes. That's what I'm looking for. Just do... Five answers. Got to decode it. Okay. Oops. So let's actually put that there too. Now if we run it, we should, should see, there we go, some HTML. Nice, so now we're gonna do the assembly. Temp run, I just wanna get I need to get my head around this a little bit, so I'm just going to build a temp thing here. So HTML doc equals get web page. We're going to get that. And then Oh, well, so yeah, see again, like I'm, I have to bounce off this Apple script. And again, I don't want to close all my browser like this. I kind of, I, I kind of have to test on the live stuff in order to make this go again. I could throw, well, I could, this is where I could kind of throw another thing at it. Um, and I could basically make an integration test. Yeah, let's make an integration test. So def test integration. N-T-E-G-R-A integration. So URL. Well, no, so let's do this. Again, start before you get into any of that stuff. Target string equals uh, the title the description and this doesn't have to be right right now I just need to get a test going So assemble MD string. All right, so we're gonna bomb. And we may bomb because I might have left detritus over in the other, uh, oops, what's all that doing? One test failed. Yeah, because it can't find this, which is all good. So I'm going to get rid of this. 
Get web page we like. Do it is where we're working. Make MD string. Oh. No, so that's going to be separate because I want to explicitly pass the URL. I don't want to have to have that call over to the URL. Or do I? No, because we're going to pass it to the description too, and the URL has to get called somewhere else. So that get calls up here. Let me get rid of this. Oops. Okay, we're going to get the description. So this thing that's going to go into Did we fix it? Just failed. No, we didn't fix it. Oh, did I not make that? C. I'm gonna cheat a little bit. This is actually not that big a cheat, right? Now that I think about it. Go green, green, sweet. Yeah, you could probably just do these two steps as a thing. Why is that angry? All right, still green? Still green. Oh, the only thing is I'm not sure if we're testing the right test. Also, this should be over here. Whoa. Oh, this freaks me out. Okay. I was doing this at one point and I was testing the wrong test or I was running the wrong test and I broke a bunch of stuff without knowing it. Um, so we're going to pass the assembler string. I'm just trying to figure out how I want to do this, right? Because we're going through... Mm, I don't need that. I don't need that. I don't need that. I don't need that. Get rid of this. We're, that's kind of duplication. I'm going to pop this out for a second. Because... Go ahead and kill this, too. It's a lot of work for one test. Because what we want, so he, okay. Yeah, yeah, so we've got the title and we've got the URL and then description is, or sorry, HTML doc is this. for a minute. So we've got our title, our URL. Oh, and actually I'm not running to it yet because the other thing I want to do, there should be this is going to break now, right? One past failed. Yeah, there we go. Actual expected. Or expected actual. Sweet. Because we want those to be marked down lines. There really are just two tests in here. That's fine. To dust pass. So we've got the title of the URL. We get the HTML doc from get web page with the URL. Then we get the description from that. Then we send all of that to make MD string, which requires title, 
of the title, URL of URL, description, description. Was a lot. Let's see what happens. Is this right? There's no way that all works. Wah wah. Oh, okay. This is the. This is all right though, because um, this is where our description's blowing up. This is the whole point of all this testing was to was to get to this point. Because now what we need to do. with the Twitter description. Target string equals here. Result string equals here. Just make sure we got a working test. Oh, it's expected and then actual. So you do target first based off what we just saw a second ago. Result, All right? So are all the tests passing, right? Test passed one, okay, that's cool. Okay, and so what I'm gonna do now is I wanna keep, I just wanna send stuff and get stuff back. So I'm gonna duplicate this test to start with. So we're gonna make it easier and shorter to see. Maybe. Quick Fox. Just so we have something different there. Which really, I, this is, I'm kind of goofing because I should have run it first to make sure this actually works. Especially because that's changed. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, ooh, I did a different thing here, didn't I? So this is our target string. This is our HTML doc. Our result string. I'm gonna go back and just try and keep it green, which is just gonna be this right now. One test passed, okay. And now what I'm gonna do, see, I should have pulled that out. Let's put this in, which is sending the same HTML doc, so this should still pass. One passed. Now's when we get into the fun part. So, all right. What I really need is to look at this. So the way I was doing my description is this. So what we're gonna do here is HTML doc equals all this stuff. Just 
content. Quick Fox. All right, still passing because we haven't changed anything. Now we see our failure. And let's see what our failure is. List index out of range. Name, description. All right, so we're gonna bump back to passing, just to make sure we're still there. Um, beautiful soup. Check if it exists. Oh, you know what I should do? I should close tabs that don't that aren't helpful. That way when I run the pass on them, uh, when I run this process, it shows me all the stuff. Simplest way to find a track is just to simply to find it. Isn't that what we're doing? Earth. Actually, check this out. I'm gonna start getting better at this. Oh, 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 oh. Here's the problem. All right, so we're gonna do some refactoring. I've got it, I just, test passing, I'm good. So again, I'm gonna stay one step away from green. There we go. I don't know what hotkeys even are anymore. Ow. So let's do this. Because what's what's happening, I think, is I'm, I'm calling that find. And then I'm trying to do this on top of it, which again, was I was asking earlier about, is this the Pythonic way or whatever? But like, that's breaking because I did multiple steps and the first step uh, returns a null list because there's nothing in there with name description. So, um, meta tags equals this. And then Turn strings equals this. Let's see if that's still alive. That's still alive. Okay, cool. So how do you check? So that's find all. Where was that? If child tag do stuff. change this to find what happens because that way we only have to deal with one is this still working oops crap failed oh because we're passing that test passed okay so we'll call that tag because we're really only finding one If child tag, okay, so it's gonna return, it's, it'll load null or something in there because we can do this test. If don't let's the other, you can use the find method and see something like data read, find my ID, okay, uh, sure. Get description. So here we go. If meta tag I'm not moving it into a variable 
right now. I don't have a good reason why I'm not doing that. Let's see if we pass. I passed. Okay. So now we've got a conditional in here. And this shouldn't matter, right? So we're all golden. Yep. So now we've got a conditional in here that we can check and see if everything's working. So now we should fail again. And again, we kind of stayed one step away from green that whole time. So test failed. None is not quick fox. Expected quick fox got none. Ugh. All right, so let's see if we can make progress on this. And again, I'm one, I'm, I can still come right back to it if I need to, and, and if I need to blow it away and start over. Uh, and then, so the other thing, and I'm actually going to do another thing that I saw her do just to check. So in order to really stay one, whoops. In order to really stay one step away from green, what'd that just do? Why did it go over there? I'll do that. I'm actually gonna call out to a completely different thing. I don't know if this is a good idea or not. It might be, it might not be. But so now, test. So if we go here, we're still green. But now I can work on this one without screwing up this one. Uh, the idea being I can get this one to work and then move them back in or make them collaborative. So to start with, what I want to do is get this piece of code working, right? So I want quick fox coming in. And this is where it's a little bit, yeah, this is, I like this move. Um, so that test is now passing. And I haven't messed with anything because like it's really easy when you're trying to how trying to do this work with two different things to completely jack this one up trying to get it to work. But so I'm just offloading to a completely different place, doing my moves here, and then I'll reassemble later and then point everything back and merge the test back in and point it to the same place. Um, and you you could even do like v2 here like i can move the test either way um and actually let's try that so this is gonna break because we don't have a test name anymore just to hopefully right yeah so this is v2 hit the right thing test passed So now we're, whoops. All kinds of craziness happening. So we're gonna parse our doc. And like, I can be a little aggressive on this because most of that other code was working. This is, this is where, so that first line, it's like, okay, yeah, sure, that probably works. Now, What I'm looking for is name, Twitter description. And then if meta tag, let's just fire that up, see what happens. Got it, okay. So 
so now what I can do, what I should be able to do, so if, if that exists, so now I think I can just do this. And I probably could have, whatever, figured this out. So save that, run again. Everything's still happy. Actually, let's run down here. Why is it? Why is it only doing one test? There we go. There's all three. That freaks me out. I still don't understand that. But so now I can back off this V2, hopefully. All three tests passed. So that that fixed it. That that's got that happening. And then I can go through and I can clean up that V2 that I was working on. I can just nuke it because we don't need it anymore. Uh, where's all that? Where's all that? Right, we're still good. Yeah, that's it. Run my test one more time. There you go. Three tests. All good. Sweet. So, and also now I've got my pattern. And like, so there's duplication in here, but I'm not going to worry about that duplication right now. Um, the, because what I could do is only have one return statement at the end or whatever. There's a couple different ways you can approach this, but this is fine and this is working. So now I actually want to try and run the full thing again. Um, and we'll see if we hit another error. My guess is we're going to hit some because there's probably some pages that don't have any type of meta block on them. Pagination. What is all this? Live reload. Uh, Safari URL puller. Beautiful soup. There's a page. It's probably the page that we ha are on right now. Yeah. Uh, oh, why didn't that have a Twitter description? It does. What's going on? Something weird's going on. I don't think that was the right thing. See how... I don't, the run on this is inconsistent to me. I don't think this is running the full thing. Is it? I mean, clearly that doesn't have a meta tag. took all this stuff out, so... Oh, maybe that's... Does that mean it failed on the first one it called? Because shouldn't it be printing... Yeah, let's see if it puked on the first one. Localhost stream notes. Sure enough. Okay. So if we give it Test description, Twitter, test description, none would be next. Oops. Whoops. Whoa. HTML. 
head whatever title just to put something in there here title head body body HTML almost certainly doesn't matter still doing it also I like this order better target string result string should pass I should print safari your pull error pull test description test description none oh, yeah so if you see all of that it tells you which test it's running but it's 700 characters over the last left so result string now right we're going to pass it the html doc which is gonna explode. Assertion failed. So I could do the same thing where I move this over to its own thing, but like, I don't like the way this is formatted anymore. Oh, whoops, I don't think I pulled it out. Yeah, let's do this. There you go. So it just needed something coming back. Poor test. And again, like, so that one, I was pretty confident I knew how to do it. I don't, I don't like this structure. So I'm actually gonna refactor this structure um, after I get everything working. I don't want to ref I don't want to refactor yet. Like I'm okay with this being messy right now. So we're gonna try and run the full thing again and see what else we get. Oh, maybe this get description. Super beautiful. Type of object none type has no link. Tell us what line we're on. Line 10. And get description. HTML doc, HTML parse it. So it doesn't. Has no link still. Okay. Stream notes. And it prints it out. Why are we printing out all that code, by the way? Is that coming from this? Title URL description. Something's wrong in here. Let's walk through this. Yeah, and I should. Mm. Or three forbidden. What? Who's forbidden? Is 
Star City Biz. Okay. This page won't let bots hit it. I didn't think about that. Ugh. Which is unfortunate because it looks like a cool page. They've got all kinds of cool stuff here. That sucks. I didn't think about that. It's in, so this page is sending back a 403 response, so there's no content. So when I'm sending the content to Beautiful Soup, it says no. So how do we fix that? All right. So get description. It can return nothing. So here's what we're going to do. Make another test. Like, I could look for the error code. Or I could look for any code that I would whitelist instead of blacklist. I would look for any error code that's not 200. And then fall out from that. But we're going to try a different way. Def. Whoops. Def. Description not non 200. HTML doc, nothing. Target string, nothing. Results, string, nothing. Self, sort equals, expected result. I can't remember which one again. I think it was right. test pass so then oh, get rid of that. then we fire this down here oh, and actually I guess I can do it this way like this too this way I can comment this one instead of having to uncomment the other one whatever so I have no idea what this is going to do. Crap, it passed. I didn't want it to pass. Get description, HTML doc. Okay, we've got to figure out how to break it. So it's sending... Oh, it needs to send none. What's that going to do? Test failed. Okay, good. It should give us that none type has length none. Okay, good. Because it was, when we tried to send a string, string has length of zero. So again, I could roll this into another one, but I've, I've got a pretty decent idea how to uh, attack this. So um, if HTML doc, does this work? Oops, oh, I was paused. Test passed. Five test passed. Okay. Actually, I should probably commit some of these. Mostly working. Actually, I'm not going to do it now because I might have it now that I just jinx myself. Okay, so let's get these out of here. Put these back in. I don't know why HTML docs gray there. It's right here. Oh, there it goes. Let's see what that does. 4-3 forbidden. I thought we dealt with that. Good news is this is showing us the right thing. Why is...
I don't understand why it's printing. Oops, no, open here. I don't understand why it's printing. Bring, print. Print markdown string, print response read. Oh. How's that working? With open response, shouldn't it be this? How's that working? Four, three, forbidden, right. Well, this one's working at least. Okay. We're gonna be, it's hitting that same one with a four or three, I'm guessing. Uh, four, three, response, read, decode. This is where that's exploding. See, the problem is... Print response status code. This looks helpful. doing press URL open as response okay let's see what it's got that's my new favorite thing is looking up the or whatever status. Okay, try that. <laughs> Give me a 403. 200. That was from my site. Is it hitting the 403 before? It even gets to this? Yeah. Oh, come on. forbidden. Alright, so that's we found out where the problem is. 
and it's happening here. Import requests. The best way to do this is use the request library. See, that's from 2014, though. URL, URL open. These days I write Python 2, Python 3 compatible code using Python 6. Oh, whatever that is. Written, yeah, probably because mod security or similar security which blocks spiders. Yep. Your request. Yeah, so we got to get the request. Oh, you, he wants to pass. He wants to fake it. I don't need to fake it. Um, if I don't get the description, that's fine. But I want to know how to get around the 403 is really what I'm after. Quest URL. Status code is what needs to happen. Uh, what's down here? All kinds of craziness. Geez. Here I'll open Python status code. Request URL open. defines functions and classes which help in opening URLs, mostly HTTP, in a complex world. It returns the status code of the response. That's what we're looking for. yellow. Oh, because I'm searching for it. Crap. I mean, it's right here, right? Let's just make sure that's it. Oh, got to pass it. And then here's our problem. error. Oh, do you just catch the error? Uh, mm, 
Nope. Oh, you just gotta catch the exception? I actually don't know how these work very well. Boom. Here. That's a pain. Okay. I don't know why I put with response in there that way. I'm going to take a back up for a second and just scroll and look at stuff because, you know, oh, here's a go. Yeah. So this is, oh, you can only read hundred characters. Oh, that's cool. Do you like a head on it? Okay. So this is their, this is how they're doing it. They just don't put the tries in. It's also without using the context manager approach. I don't really know what the context manager approach is. Yeah, object controls the environment seen in a width statement by defining enter and exit. Okay, cool. I think that's the better thing to do, but I just wasn't sure. Uh, yeah. Here's code for a put request, basic auth, proxies, adding headers. Interesting. Um, it's funny that they don't use that in the with context, with context, params, URL, whatever. Uh, legacy interface. Nowhere in here do they talk about should try to handle URL. Return none. So that's a redirect. Okay. Basic auth. Uh huh. Misleading results. Something about FTP. Nothing in here talks about catching 403s. Air Force 7. Pro Wait, actually, I guess I should look for 403. Yeah. And it doesn't really retry the request with authentication info if available. Excuse me. Off handling objects. I can't tell if that's all the same size, it probably is. Well, let's see if we can make that work. Oops. Okay. You know what I should have been doing all this time is taking more notes. So my stream notes are dead. Oh, this is them.
try with that get that whoops why are you going over there we're just gonna roll past the except uh what do we want to do get web page no, no so we're gonna return nothing oops Okay, so those are your two returns. Get rid of all that. Get rid of all that. Get rid of all that. Should print nothing. Actually, let's just print something in there so we can see what's happening. Dot, dot. Thing. Close it. Dot. Format. You go here. Run. Ta da! Oh. So, let's see what happens. Got a crazy one there. Another crazy one. Another crazy one. Another crazy one. going on there so split my lines where's our content so here's our content with the meta tag oh we need to do okay i'm gonna make a test for this we need to do multi-line input and then turn it into single line uh... and again i'm gonna mm, okay i think it's time to refactor this one and then run it just because I've got duplication and I need to add something new and I don't want to have to add it in both places and then update the tests. So I want to consolidate down. Finish. So just want to run the test. Good, everything's still passing. Okay, and change, so that's okay. So that's what we expected. What if we do this? And again, so this is one of those weird, like I'm trying to figure out how, like what the right way to stay one away from green would be. And so easiest thing, ooh, I don't know what just happened. Cause like there's, a decent amount going on in here. Not really, but you know. I mean, I guess the easiest thing, right, is we just duplicate. Oops. And we call this back. So I can always get there. Or let's call. Yeah, so another way that you could do this. Check this out. New. Let's see if this works. So let's just make sure our tests work. Right? We didn't break anything. I'm going to come in here, and the first thing I'm going to do is call new. And then that should always return. But I'm going to force a return anyways. That would break a test. And that didn't work. 
Oh, because I gotta pass it. This. Nope. I thought this would work. Oh, oh, oh. I got it. See, I just, I just short-circuited that, and I'm working in new now. I like this, because now I can do my testing down here, and I've still got all this code ready to go for me. I don't know why that's highlighted. Kind of concerning. But so now I can do all my refactor here. And like, if, if I do something to screw something up, like, um, that should break, right? Yeah. So I'm working in this one, but I can always come up here, come in out and run, and I'm one step away from green. I can always get back there. And so I can, and in worst case, I could just recopy this code. Like if this goes completely sideways, I could just recopy that code down and get there. Uh, this is another Sandy Metz technique. And if you get used to this, you do it, I think you do it fast enough and it's kind of like boom, 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 boom. Uh, I just need to, I'm kind of brain dead, so I gotta figure out what to actually do here. So, meta tag. If meta tag exists, let's do this. Content equals meta tag. Oops. This feels weird, but whatever. I'll just try it and see what happens. So this should all still work. Return content. Oh, crap. If meta tag exists. Yeah, so... Can you do an if on an assignment? I think I tried this earlier. What does this work? No, it does not. I'm trying to figure out like how to run the if on this. I don't have that in my head right now. Um, oh, this is weird. Yeah, so what's a good way to do this? Uh, oh, hey, why Django not PHP? Um, I'm doing a lot of Python. I have no idea how long that message has been sitting there. Hey Jay, sorry if you've been hanging out for a while. No, like I like Django as a framework too, as compared to just having like raw PHP. I'm sure there are PHP frameworks out there, uh, but I've been doing some Python and I've played around with it. Um, oh cool, I just saw your message, nice. It's over to the side, so I was afraid you've been there for like an hour. Um. But yeah, so that's kind of the, the thinking. It's There's no real, like, I'm not religious about any of this stuff. Uh, what I am confused about is the best way to approach this. I may just not refactor this because I can't think about it right now. Yeah, I'm just going to do it the old fashioned way. So let's get rid of this. Make sure our tests still run. 
Right, okay, so now we need to add a new test. I don't even remember what I was doing. Oh, multi-line. So, sounds a little much right now. So we need to make a multi-line test for description. Uh, get rid of that line over here. Maybe. So we're just gonna copy this and cheat a little bit. Description, multi-line. Actually, I'm going to pull it from the other one, just because it's going to be easier. Where is this? This one will work. We'll do it from the Twitter one. See, I still don't... No, I am going to fix that. Because I only want to add one test, but I want to make sure I catch both of these. Where is my method? Is that it? Add it. There we go. Test still running. Test running. Okay. So how? Okay, I can just do it this way. Um. Content equals that. Content equals. That. Is this gonna work? Hey protocol. Um I'm so burned right now, I don't know if this is even gonna go. Hey, yeah. Going live, it's awesome. So those work. And then if content return content. Is that still gonna work? Hey, it still works. Okay, so now we can make a test that'll cover both of those things uh, with one go, which is gonna be our multi-line stuff here. So we're gonna copy this one for now. Quick box. Is that going to work? That should break, right? Multi line. Run it. One test failed. That's good. Nope. I want a new line there, I guess. How? Oh, you got to do. Is it the three thing? And then take this noise out of there. That should give us a new line, right? Yeah, so what I'm doing, y'all, is one of the metadata fields I'm trying to process has multiple lines in it. So I just need to rip that out, which I think I can do right here with uh, replace new line with the space. See what we get. Oops, ran the wrong file. Ah, uh, don't do that. Stop. On this file. Test failed, crap. Quick fox, I need quick fox. Why didn't it? Oh, because there's spaces too. All right, so we'll, uh, anything more than one space will, wait, why didn't it move it to one line at least? Whatever, we'll throw a regular expression at it. Um, pi reg x. These days, I remember how to do this. Oh, we've already got reg x in there. Uh, 
right? Are you sub? Yeah, so let's see. Slash s plus and any number of spaces with one space in content. I don't know if that's going to match new lines or not. We'll find out. It does not appear to have matched new lines. Why is that not working? I'm getting it, right? Something looks wrong there. I don't think it's getting it right. Uh, if content print. Hang on a second. I just want to make sure I'm re really catching the right thing. So we're going to return junk here. Somehow, I am totally editing the wrong thing. Okay, that's okay, we can fix that. So this is gonna become new, new. This is gonna become the real one. And this is gonna become new, but before we do that, I wanna run the test without the breaking one and make sure I've got us back to green. Five tests, okay, we're good. That was super weird. Because I was in the wrong place. Okay, quick fox. And now if we pass up here, let's see what happens. One failed, but we got junk. Okay, so at least we're hitting the right thing. And now, Let's pull a regular expression back in and run that. Test passed. There we go. So we cleared out all the new lines. Sweet. Uh, okay, time to rerun the whole process and see what happens. I can get rid of this. Yes, yes. Run it. See what happens. Ugh. Variable content reference before assignment. Oh. All right, I'm gonna just back off of this and do it. This way. Reference before assignment, line 23, yeah. Oh, because we didn't find any of those tags. Oh, okay, 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 hang on. What is that gonna do? I don't actually know in Python how that works with... Um... Hey, this is progress. Yeah, so y'all, uh, what it's doing is I've got all these tabs open in Safari and I've got an Apple script that I found uh, here that loops through all the windows and loops through all the tabs and gives me the URLs and the titles. And so I'm taking the that and then going and fetching the pages and grabbing the descriptions and then mushing that all together into Markdown for uh, notes for the stream notes that I'm writing up for these things, uh, which is maybe here. Uh, we'll go here. So it's just gonna be a whole bunch of Markdown links like this one right here um, that will make it a lot easier for me so I can just leave tabs open and then instead of having to go in and copy and paste them all the time uh, for, or go and copy and paste and copy and paste and copy and paste and then try and write stuff up with it, I can just suck all this data down and then do a little minor edit and then just throw up all the links uh, for all the stuff that I use during the stream uh, for the stream notes. Uh, it's taken longer than I expected, but that happens sometimes. Um, let's see how we're doing. Finished. All right, let's see what we got. Uh, everything's on one line, so that's a good, good look. Uh, bring up Sublime Text. I'm just gonna throw these in because that's what we're gonna have. And let's 
Let's see, this should be in a draft. There you go. Whole bunch of links. I need to change the color of that, but yeah, so like this one, Apple script, how to execute multi-line from terminal, blah, blah, blah. And then this is where it pulled the description as well. Sweet. Um, that's it. That That's what I was looking for. I could still use a little bit of help or a little bit of modification to this where like taking out Google searches and then also there's some local host, local host stuff in here. Um, but I've been going for three and a half hours and I think I'm about done for now. Uh, probably coming back on later tonight, uh, but gotta go take a break for a bit. So uh, we'll see y'all, uh, glad you stopped by. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll talk to you soon and take it easy and be kind. See y'all.